Alrighty, so we've got a good short notice fight coming here. It's uh, Manel Cape coming back after that performance from um, against Pantoja and Mateos Nicolau. I believe I'm pronouncing that correct. Alright, so Nicolau, he's coming off a 19 month layoff. Good that they got him a fight. I'm glad the, to see him back in the UFC and that he got a fight instead of being rescheduled for another, you know, few months. Uh, so that's good. But I did like Nicolau in that Tagia Ulenbekov matchup. And I thought he should be the favorite and I got a really good line on it. And it just, yeah, it kind of sucks that it got cancelled. But that's the type of, you know, environment that we're in right now. Or that type of climate in the betting world and the the fight world at the moment. Just fights getting cancelled left, right, and center. So, can't complain. It's just the nature of the beast at the moment, but yeah. So, we'll break down the short notice matchup of Manel Cape and Nicolau, so let's get into the striking now. Alright, for Nicolau, he's got that boxing foundation, he's got fast hands. Uh, same with Manel Cape, he's got really fast hands as well. Manel will switch stance. He's mostly in Southpaw for the majority of the tape that I've watched, but he will switch stance and he's competent in either stance. I'd say he's much lighter on his feet in orthodox, um, but with his hands, he's much more fluid and he's much sharper in southpaw. Uh, so yeah, if he were to switch to orthodox, he would be he would be asking for those low calf kicks from Nicolau, which is one of his best weapons. Uh, he targets the peroneal nerve area, which really impacts... Uh, the nerves in your leg, and then pretty much disables you, pretty much, and you can't really control your leg as much as you would like to. The same thing happened with Sean O'Malley. He pretty much couldn't put any weight in it. Um, but yeah, so Manel Cape, he is heavy on that lead leg in both stance, in both stances, uh, and he doesn't throw many jabs either. Like, he's he doesn't pop the jab out very often, so he's just kind of on that lead leg just so he can faint a little bit more and, you know, faint with the jab and commit to faints a little bit more. But, you know, other than that, I don't see there's too much advantage being on so heavy on the lead leg for his style. Uh, but yeah, he has a nice check left hook in the pocket, um, especially in Southpaw. Uh, he's got a nice lead uppercut as well, but, you know, when he's in Southpaw, he will throw that uppercut from the rear hand. Uh, like a bolo uppercut, and then, you know, finish it up with a left hook as well. He's got a nice counter too as well in southpaw, in either stance really, uh, and he could catch Nicolau blitzing him with one of those, you know, hooks, or, yeah, especially the check right hook, um, but also the counter too as well, because Nicolau does like to blitz to get into range, and when Nicolau is in range, he looks to land the left hook. That's probably his best punch. It's definitely what he's done the most damage with in his career, uh, and he will extend that combination, put a two behind it, or he will start with the two and finish with the left hook, but it's definitely his best punch. Alright, so, Manel Cape, he does a few things, you know, that do get him in trouble on the feet. So it adds, he will lean back with his chin in the air to avoid punches. Uh, that's okay when you're defending, like, combinations limited to two. Uh, but, you know, when opponents do extend the combinations, you can get in trouble, or when they get tricky with it, and then, you know, step back, because they know you're going to be putting your weight forward on your lead leg to adjust your, the weight, um, just to adjust your balance, really, because you were leaning back just before. Uh, so, yeah. After they do that, they can target the lead leg, or they can blitz forward and catch you while you're kind of planted to the to the mat. Um, so yeah, good strikers. Like Nicolau, I'll probably say is a good striker. He could definitely make him pay for that. Uh, but also, Cape can get over-aggressive. He can walk on to blast doubles. He also reaches for body kicks. Nicolau can see him going body-body head, um, knocking him out like how John Jones knocked out DC. Uh, also, Manel Cape, he's got that lead hand low and orthodox. He's been caught a few times with the right hand of opponents when he was in orthodox. He Got caught a few times by Horiguchi, I believe. Haven't done extended tape on Cape because I did like I did it a few months ago, so I didn't go back and watch all of his fights. I just watched the Pantoja one for this matchup here with Nicolau. Uh, but yeah, I'm pretty sure he had trouble with opponents who had a good overhand right. 
Uh, but yeah, he will um, eat jabs as well, too. He doesn't um, have the best jab defense. Alright, so on the mat, uh, for Manel Cape, he looks to wrestle when he's like getting pressured or when he's hurt. Uh, or he will just go for a single leg in the open, which he was doing against uh, Pantoja. Uh, but, you know, Nikolaou, he's a black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. He's... Uh, got a good single leg of his own, he'll run the pipe from there. He's also got a nice blast double, he's got good timing on the blast double over a leg kick. And uh, when he does get on top, he'll look for, you know, submissions that you don't generally see from top positions, such as the, you know, Japanese necktie. I think he's got two Japanese neckties on his on his record, and he, he'll lock that in from half guard. He'll either use that to pass, or, you know, if you're not correctly defending it, he'll just commit to it and try and submit you from there. Uh, but when he does get taken down, he'll work for a heel hook just to try to create a scramble to get off bottom. And he's very good at that. Uh, he's got good jiu-jitsu. He um, is, yeah, solid off his back. And Manel Cape, you know, he has one get-up, I believe. I've only ever seen him use one get-up, and he gets taken down quite frequently in, in Ryzen. Uh, and he will shrimp to a hip, try to get on all fours from there, and then look to attack a single in that little 50-50 position, or not 50-50 position, but in that little uh, turtled to the person on top dynamic. Uh, but that's pretty much the only escape I've ever seen him use, and I wouldn't, s yeah, I'd say he has more, but that's all I've ever seen him use, so it's pretty easy to defend, uh, especially if you know it, if it's coming. Uh, but also, he will jump guard or jump guillotine, which is pretty dumb, especially for his guard game, <laughs> um, so I'm not 100% sure, 100 sure why he does that, he obviously didn't do it in the Pantoja fight, but I could see just old habits dying hard here, and him jumping guillotine for some reason, or jumping guard for some reason, um, yeah, I'm not 100% sure why he does that, he doesn't have a great guard, as it is, so, yeah, not too sure, but you know, one thing Nikolai does do, is that he will square his stance when he's getting pressured, and he's near the fence. Uh, so, you know, Manel can time a double leg from there and definitely drive through onto that. Uh, but yeah, it's definitely one of the paths to victory for Manel is to get the uh, wrestling going. Uh, so, how these guys win fights? Uh, for Manel Cape, he's got nice hands. They're, they're very fast as well, especially when he lets them go. You can't let him get into a flow state. That's when he starts cutting angles. That's when he starts mixing up his strikes, throwing a large variety of them. So you don't want to let him get into a flow state. I saw him get into that a few times at Ryzen. I uh, definitely don't want to see that kind of Manel cape. Uh, but he does have a fair bit of power for a 125er. He has good cardio, good chin, good footwork, and he's got a unique fighting style that opponents generally aren't used to fighting. Uh, so for Nikolau, he's got good hands as well. Very nice. And he's fast too. Um, and he's got really nice low leg kicks as well, uh, which, you know, we've seen a trend of that recently in the UFC. All right, so how these guys lose their fights. Uh, for Nikolau, you know, the fact that he fights off the back foot and also doesn't have the best volume, well, not the, you know, it doesn't wow you with volume, it's just, it's tough on the judges to give that type of fighter the round. Like, you know, by default, they're, you know, they have the rule set set out, but I don't think, I think it's all arbitrary to them, and I think uh, they just go off mostly aggression, really. Uh, it seems to be that way, or trending that way lately. So, you know, aggression seems to mean for a lot, and if Manel's on the front foot and he's ag aggressive, or if, you know, any opponent of Nikolaou's on the front foot and they're kind of pressing him onto the fence uh, for the whole fight, it's just kind of... It's hard for the judges to give him that round, especially with where the judges are going this year. Um, so yeah, I can definitely see that giving Nicolas some trouble in close fights, uh, but he also can be too comfortable off his back. Seems to have gone away with that habit in recent fights. Seems to create a scramble a little bit more now, and uh, looks to have some urgency to get off bottom. But uh, yeah, for Manel Cape, he seems to be a slow starter. And, you know, a good example is that in the Pantoja fight where he threw, like, 10 strikes in the first round or something like that. Uh, and also, you know, is there questions about his fight IQ or was he just really concerned about the takedown of Pantoja and he didn't want to, f you know, walk into it? 
but yeah, in general, in his Ryzen fights as well, he was falling behind on volume in pretty much every fight. Uh, but he does have a ten, you know, has the tendency to finish fights. I think he's only won one decision in his career, so he can finish fights, but he's not necessarily a minute winner. Uh, also, the strike intensities that we talked about before. All right, past the victory for these two. Uh, for Nicolau, it's just about pumping out the volume because Manel seems to be really focused on defense and just, you know, landing really clean. Uh, but pretty much you just got to be busier. You've just land the volume on the body kicks, the high kicks, since, you know, you're in that South versus Orthodox stance. Uh, pretty much how Pentosia won the fight against Cape. Uh, but also, if Manel does switch Orthodox, you know, some low calf kicks might do you handy, definitely. Also, the left hook, if Manel's going to throw that naked jab to the body or two to the body, uh, definitely catch him when he's doing that, because, yeah, he is quite slow to get out of range when he does that. Uh, but, yeah, shoot for takedowns if he gets over-aggressive or tries to pressure really hard. So, just, yeah, just try to get your respect with the grappling. Uh, don't let him just walk you down. Uh, so, for Manel Cape, I'd like to see him use Southpaw for this one, because it takes away the calf kick of... Nicolau, which is a huge part of his game, uh, and I'd also like to see him return some leg kicks of his own on Nicolau, because Nicolau doesn't check him, um, but yeah, mixing the wrestling as well, shoot when you have him close to the fence, or when he's squaring his stance close to the fence, and uh, yeah, I think he'll have, well, he'll want to get his, I think that's his weight that he can mix it up, is go to his wrestling on this one, alright, so how I see this fight going, you know, I can absolutely see this being like a really low volume fight. Uh, since these guys are too quick, you know, technical counter strikers, they'll probably have a hard time entering range on each other and getting good shots off, which they both pride themselves on, is getting good shots. Uh, so, you know, it could frustrate them. They could, you know, start um, unload, well, start picking up the volume because of that and just trying to... Uh, get the respect of the other, but yeah, I think if Cape, Cape fights in Southpaw, I think that takes away a huge part of the game for Nicolau, which is the calf kicks, but on the other hand, you know, I feel like that'd be a Manel Cape thing to do, it would be to fight Orthodox and not check one leg kick. Uh, I, I don't think I'll ever trust Manel Cape with my money, he just doesn't seem like a trustworthy guy, or a guy that's going to fight for your money. And uh, I don't, I don't know if he's, you know, you, you see some interviews and you just, is this guy all there? You know what I mean? And just in the fights as well, he proved, like he proves that it doesn't seem to be the sharpest tool in the shed. And yeah, no offense to that, but it's just what I see, and that's just my observation. So you can come out and prove me wrong with a perfect game plan in this fight, but yeah, it's just what I see. He doesn't seem to be the smartest guy in the room. Uh, so for Manel Cape, he doesn't wow you with kicks as well. Like he doesn't generally throw too many. Uh, so I believe the Southpaw versus Orthodox stance will favor Nicolau. Even though I've never seen Nicolau fought, uh, fight, sorry, a Southpaw, I think he will get the body kicks and the head kicks going. Uh, but yeah, I think it will favor Nicolau a little bit more. And I think he just generally has the better kicking game. And for the t the grappling, uh, I think both have okay takedowns, but don't have the best top control after the takedown is completed. So I don't think it's going to play too much of a factor in this fight. I think mostly it's going to be on the feet. I think Nicolau will edge it on the feet, but it'll be a very close fight. Maybe even splitting the judges. They can't decide on a winner. Uh, and they might give it to Cape just on aggression. So... Yeah, it's it's a tough fight to call. I think it's very close. It's probably around a 50-50. I slightly lean Nicolau. Just because of that performance from Cape. I just can't get it out of my head um, what he was doing in that fight. So, yeah, I've got to lean Nicolau. But probably won't bet it unless the line's really good. Maybe like $2.40 or $2.35, something like that. And I probably wouldn't play it large because that was not how Manel Cape fights usually. Well, yeah, I guess it kind of is, actually. <laughs> he is very low volume, and he um, hasn't shown the best fight IQ in the past. Uh, but, yeah, generally he does have much 
more success with his hands. But maybe, you know, it's just a step up of competition. He's in the UFC now. Maybe it's, uh, you know, he's allowed to get away with that in the regional scene. I know Ryzen is a decent organization, but the level of fighters definitely don't compare to the UFC. And I think Nikolai could definitely be a top 10 already in the UFC. He was, he well, he left the UFC uh, after a good run. And he's coming back now, and I think he sh probably should be top 10, top 15 already. Uh, and Manel Cape, he's yet to show that for me yet. Well, yeah, it's the flyweight division, so he should probably be in the top 15. But he's yet to show me that he wants to be there yet. So we'll see. Um, yeah, if I get a good line on Nicolau, I'll hit it, but not too confident in this one for either party.